So I'd like to call this meeting, a uh, regular board meeting of July 5th, 2023, call this meeting to order. And uh, we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. And Vice President Bowman, would you lead us this time? Thank you. So just a bit of housekeeping for those uh, who are attending, attending virtually. If you could uh, put yourself on mute until time for public comments. And for those of us in the boardroom today, if you could silence your um, phones and other electronic devices, that would be wonderful. And I will be calling on directors in roll call order for discussion and questions in the following order. Director Grasha. Director Bloomer, Secretary Treasurer McKenna, Vice President Bowman, and uh, President Ortega. All votes will be conducted via roll call. And uh, with that, I'll ask uh, Assistant Secretary um, Baca to conduct the roll call, please. Director Grasha. Present. Director Bloomer. Present. Secretary Treasurer McKenna. Present. Vice President Bowman. I'm here. And President Ortega. Uh, present. All present. Thank you. So item number three on our agenda today, public comment on items not on today's agenda. So for those members of the public who would like to speak about an item relevant to the Desert Water Agency but not on today's agenda, now is the time, uh, the opportunity to do that. Uh, we'll keep comments to, or ask you to keep your comments to no more than three minutes. And I'll start with um, also reminding the, the public that as provided in the Brown Act, the board is prohibited from acting on items that are not listed on today's agenda. Assistant Secretary Baca, have we received any public comments via email? No public comments have been received. Thank you. And I see no members of the public who wish to speak at this time. We will move on to item number four, which is a public comment on items listed on our agenda today. And, and like before, we ask that you keep your comments to three minutes. And uh, if we've received any public comments for items on today's agenda? No? None have been okay, received. Okay, thank you. Um, are there any members of the public who would like to speak who might be attending virtually? Seeing none, we'll move to the next item, which is item number five, the consent calendar. Um, this is an opportunity uh, for uh, any member of this board to ask that an item currently listed on the consent calendar be um, be uh, withdrawn or for, for, for further discussion. Um, are there any items on the consent calendar that the directors would like to uh, pull for discussion at this time? No. no? Okay. So uh, may I have uh, a motion to, um, to proceed with the acceptance of the calendar? So I don't move. Okay. I have a, a first from... Vice President Bowman, and I'll look for a second. Uh, second. Thank you, Director Grasha. So may we have a roll call vote, please. Director Grasha? Aye. Director Bloomer? Aye. Secretary Treasurer McKenna? Aye. Vice President Bowman? Aye. And President Ortega? Aye. Thank you. Item 6A, so we have two action items today. Item 6A. Uh, request adoption of resolution number 1310, establishing tax rate for fiscal year 2023-2024. And that will be a presentation by our finance director, Ms. Sines. Thank you, President Ortega and members of the board. Attached uh, for the board's review is a copy of resolution 1310, which certifies to the Riverside County Board of Supervisors uh, the Desert Water Agency's ad valorem tax for tax rate for 23-24 fiscal year. The taxes, otherwise known as the State Water Project tax collected, are used to meet our financial contractual obligations related to the State Water Project. In order to determine the amount that, that's necessary to be raised by the ad valorem tax, staff analyzes and compares the agency's current year and projected revenues from the agency's replenishment assessment charge that is available to cover state water project charges. Also included in that evaluation is the current and projected increases in property values and its impact of ad valorem tax revenues against the current 
anticipated state water contract invoices for fiscal year 23-24 and projected costs, projected agency state water project reserve targets, and the current and anticipated costs associated with supplemental water supply projects that will appear on the statement of charges. Taking these factors into consideration, along with tax rate stability, staff recommends a tax rate necessary to fund current expenditures and provide an adequate ending reserve balance for long-term revenue requirements. The 23-24 ad warm tax rate calculations are attached. Also, I'd like to point your attention to attachment number three, which is a chart that shows the long-term tax rate planning done by the agency. Currently, our projections are through the year 2035, um, which includes uh, the inputs for this, include, of course, a statement of charges, uh, future water project cost projections, and anticipated payment timelines for other, other water supply projects that are anticipated to be accepted onto the statement of charges and also um, state water contractor cost projections for the statement of charges in the future. So you'll see the yellow line is the anticipated tax revenue that will be generated by the accompanying tax rate that is shown in orange on the chart. And over the long term, it is our goal to remain as constant as possible without increasing it year over year and steadily decreasing it into the future according to the available information we have to date. And you'll see that that yellow line at times, it dips below the blue bar. The blue bar is the revenue requirement while accounting for the revenue generated by the replenishment assessment charge, that's the, the amount that we need, to, um, amount of funds that we need to pay our statement of charges. And when that yellow line dips below the top of the blue bar, that is in those years we'll be dipping into our reserves. So essentially smoothing our tax rate so we don't need to constantly be moving it up and down year over year. Can I, do you mind, Mr. Brown? Go ahead. <laughs> the agency utilizes revenues generated by the agency's replenishment assessment charge and the state water project tax to meet its financial contractual obligations for the imported uh, water from the state water project. The replenishment assessment charge is intended to cover charges attributed to the delivery of the state water project water and the state water project tax is intended to cover the charges related to the availability of the imported water source, such as the capital charges associated with the state water project. The agency's enabling act only allows the replenishment assessment charge to include recovery of the state water project charges attributed to the delivery of the state water project water. It does not allow the replenishment assessment charge calculation to include recovery of state water project charges attributed to the availability of state water project water, which is that capital component. Currently, the replenishment assessment charge rate is not sufficient to cover all replenishment assessment charge related expenditures as outlined in the 23-24 engineer's report on groundwater replenishment and assessment program. Where <coughs> RAC revenue is insufficient to cover all state water project charges, the state water project tax revenue covers the remainder of the state water contract obligations. This deficit paid from the state water project tax is only used to pay state water project contractual obligations. The state water project tax revenue is not and cannot be used for any other purpose. The agency has a multi-year plan in place to bring the replenishment assessment charge rate up to a level where it is sufficient to cover all anticipated replenishment assessment charges related expenditures as outlined in the engineer's report on the replenishment assessment program. It would be infeasible for the, uh, to utilize the agency's retail water rate revenue to pay all of the 23-24 state water project expenditures, given that a significant portion of the imported water is used by water purveyors other than the agency for delivery to their retail customers. 
and the agency's retail rates and charges for fiscal year 23-24 have been calculated in accordance with Article 13D of the California Constitution. Because the agency itself also pays the replenishment assessment charge assessed on the production of water from areas benefiting from the recharge of imported water, the, area, the agency's retail water rate includes a proportionate share of the replenishment assessment charge related expenditures as compared to the groundwater producers within, producers within the agency's boundaries. If the agency were to include all groundwater all 2324 state water project expenditures in the calculation of the agency's retail water rate, it would increase the rate from $2.44 per 100 cubic feet to approximately $4.55 per 100 cubic feet, almost doubling the agency's retail water rate. And those customers alone would bear the cost of supplying the imported water to customers of other water, purveyor, other water purveyors located in other areas of the agency. Through the adoption of this resolution, the Desert Water Agency Board of Directors will fix the rate of eight cents per hundred dollars of assessed valuation as included in the 2324 general fund budget, which is a reduction in the rate charged in fiscal year 22-23, which was 10 cents per hundred dollars of assessed valuation. The attached summary of assessed valuations and resulting tax rates from the 2324 Desert Water Agency General Fund budget provides a breakdown by source of the estimated property tax revenue. If resolution 1310 is adopted today, staff will submit a copy of the, to the County Board of Supervisors to be included in their upcoming coming agenda for adoption. This resolution directs the County Board of Supervisors to levy such tax rate for the 2324 fiscal year on all taxable property within the agency. Legal counsel has reviewed this resolution as well as the staff report. The fiscal impact of the agency, the board, if the board directors fixes the tax rate of eight cents per hundred dollars of assessed valuation, it will provide $38.6 million in estimated property tax revenue. And this has already been included in the 2324 general fund budget. Staff recommends the board adopt <laughs> resolution number 1310 establishing the tax rate for 2324 fiscal year of eight cents per hundred dollars of assessed valuation. And I would be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you very much. Director Grasha. <clears throat> this is uh, for one year period of time. We're not projecting out past, right? We're, we're, it, it, is there a, uh, a point during the year when you look at this and say whether we were right or not. Um, my, I, I guess I, part of my question is over the past 60 years, how many times has this rate been adjusted? Do you know? I, I know of one time, but there may have been 20 times. I, so this is for one year only. Right. So that it, we have to fix the tax rate every year, whether it stays the same or it changes. Next year, if we wanted eight cents, we would come back and do the same same thing of presenting the rate and the findings that are establishing that rate. Um, I do have a listing of the times that it has been adjusted. It has been adjusted several times over the right. years. I do not have that listing right. with me. Um, but it has been 10 cents for um, the past several years. That is correct. So this is the first reduction in recent history. M my only concern is that um, it's easy to lower it, and it gets. It seems to me that it gets more dicey when you increase it, especially. And the times that you would increase it, I would suspect, are going into more turbulent financial times for our public. For instance, you know, 2008 property values plummeted. Uh, I don't know, you know, what what happened then with this, but my guess is is that if they were at eight eight cents, that it would have had to gone up then. And I'm I'm just I just want to be sure that a year from now we're not readjusting it back up and 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 doing it with a political headwind that w might cause the board, you know. Anxiety so, to raise it. 
We do have, and that is the reason why we we are um, we do a multi-year projection because that's a desire is that we want to keep it steady and then, but we are seeing that you know the need is not there because property values are increasing at such a rate that we cannot justify keeping it at ten cents because the amount of revenues that it would generate would be excessive. So in line with our multi-year plan out to 2035, given all of the information that we have, plus we, we add on escalation factors because we know inflation happens. So um, we have added all of that on to the property tax rates and the associated charges that are included in here to give us our best picture, given all of the information that we have currently, to be able to project out into the future. And so that is the reason for the decrease, but as you can see, we are still keeping that steady for a while and then in the future stepping it down, but every year as we receive updated information, as we're doing this evaluation in conjunction with the budget, we put in those new and updated inputs, new timelines for any payment schedules that we have, any changes that have, may have happened to be able to, again, produce a multi-year plan so that we can say, this is what the plan is. We want to smooth the rate. The goal is to not increase. And that is also another reason for our reserve levels so that we can weather any short-term impacts that may happen um, and then have a longer term to make those adjustments if necessary. So a 20 or 30% drop in real estate values over the next 24 months wouldn't have much of an effect on what we're doing here? No, it would not because of our reserve levels. So it would not have that impact and that would be a delayed impact um, based off of when those values are assessed. Thank you. Mr. President, could I interject one additional thought okay. in, in response to one question you asked, I think Director Gratia, you asked whether the agency takes a look at it mid-year. The, um, the way the process works is the agency certifies the tax rate that goes to the county the county arranges, takes the action necessary to get it on the tax roll. And so once the county has done that, they don't make adjustments in the tax rate mid-year. So okay. the way to adjust it would be in the following year with a, a lower tax rate. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Director Bloomer. Um, just a quick question on the um, projected state water project um, uh, costs. That is if we get full delivery or is it the state water project projecting out what the like average delivery would be? So what's included is 60%, which is what um, this Department of Water Resources puts into our projected statement of charges is at 60%. Now for the current year, we have adjusted that based off of what we know. So, um, so for fiscal year 23, 24, that does include the 100%. Full delivery. The full delivery, because we know that that is coming. Future, it is based off of the 60% long-term reliability factor. Okay, perfect, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Secretary Treasurer McKenna. Well, I think first of all, this is a good news story. I think uh, our taxpayers will be happy we're cutting their that little element of their property tax by 20%. Um, it flows, of course, from the increase in property values that we've all experienced in, in the neighborhood. Um, uh, the point on these terms is a good one. We have significant reserves already established, and even with the 8% rate, we will add to those reserves this year. So there's a cushion there for, you know, to ride out a few bad years of perhaps property value reduction. You know, we had something spectacular in 2008. Hopefully that doesn't happen again. But I think this is great. I think you know the eight percent rate we, we you anticipate we will hold steady for the next five years or so, and then there could well be a further reduction. So I'm happy to see this. Thanks very much. Thank you, Vice President Bowman. Yes, thank you, Esther, for this report. I think uh, agreeing with uh, Director McKenna that this is really good news. Um, I mean, if you just look at the simple math, it's a twenty percent reduction. You know, sounds like a lot, but if you think, but nonetheless, do we have? Um, will be it? Will will we be announcing this uh, in our bills that we send to the customer, or on social media? Because it is good news. There is a plan to for our outreach department to do a um, an 
I'm not entirely sure what the exact plan is, but there is a plan to, to announce and to push out um, um, information regarding the decrease. Wonderful. And I think it would also be a good thing that on our website, we would have a statement of facts about this um, tax that has been on the property, you know, people's property forever. If we don't have one, I'm sorry I didn't peruse the website to see if we did or didn't. But it is good information to have. Uh, so, thank you. Thank you. I have no further comments or questions, so I think we can um, proceed to a vote. Look for a motion. I'll move to. Uh, okay. Sorry. I'll move to. Okay. Uh, I have a first from Secretary Treasurer McKenna, and I'll look for a second. I'll second. second. Oh, oh. I think Director Grasha <laughs> was a little bit faster. <laughs> that was louder. So we have a second from Director Grasha. Um, may we have a roll call vote, please? Director Grasha? Aye. Director Bloomer? Aye. Secretary Treasurer McKenna? Aye. Vice President Bowman? Aye. And President Ortega? Aye. Thank you. Our second action item today, a 6B, is resolution adoption of other services rendered as a director listing compensable events. And again, that's Director Signs. Thank you, Mr. President and members of the board. On June 15th, the executive committee discussed the addition of cybersecurity trainings to the listing of compensable events and recommended its presentation to the full board for consideration. These cybersecurity trainings are mandatory for agency staff and board directors are also encouraged to complete these trainings as well as they have a access to agency IT assets and possess a DWA domain email address. Currently, the cybersecurity trainings do not fall within a defined category of comp compensable events or meetings under section two in ordinance number 62. The current categories and um, and corresponding listings include conferences, external meetings, and public events. In order for these trainings to qualify as a day of service for compensation, a new other service rendered as a director listing will need to be created. This listing will provide a section two category of events that can contain the cybersecurity trainings. This list listing may be updated as the board desires to add or remove any events from the listing. When adding additional events to this section two category, other services rendered as a director, the board may also determine a maximum quantity of, of, of an event per year to be compensated. For example, the monthly cybersecurity trainings take approximately 15 to 30 minutes to complete, averaging around 25 minutes across the agency according to our current records. In addition to this monthly training, if an in individual fails the monthly phishing test, there will be an assigned an additional targeted remediation training. When we include the remediation trainings, there's a possibility of up to 24 trainings in a year. Important considerations regarding this training are session duration, remediation training, and total number of training sessions. Options the board might consider include grouping these training sessions together, for example, Three, training, three trainings could equal one day of service, or it, in, we would be able to limit one compensable training per quarter. If the board determines that all remedial, remedial trainings are not compensated, a limit would be set to one training per month. Or if the board determines that all trainings will be compensated, no, tra no limit will be set, or any other option the board may desire. The maximum number of compensable days in any calendar month will remain at 10 days as mandated, mandated by the California Water Code. Legal counsel has reviewed the staff report and other services rendered as a director listing. There is no fiscal impact as the maximum number of meetings has not changed and has been included in the 23-24 budget already. The recommendation, if the board desires the cybersecurity trainings to be a compensable event, Staff recommends that the board approve the listing of other services rendered as a director to be included as compensable events according to section two of ordinance number 62, 62 or successor ordinance. And I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have and leave it up to your discussion. Thank you. Director Grasha, do you have some uh, questions, no questions or comments? No, no? comments. Okay. Uh, Director Bloomer? Uh, I don't have any questions or comments. Thanks. Okay. 
Secretary Treasurer McKenna. Um, I, do, I do have a question. Um, so we are proposing that you have a maximum of one per month unless the person fails that, that test and would have to do some more? That's just one option that the board has to consider if you would like to make all of them compensable, whether you um, do not pass the fishing test or not. If all of them within the year are failed, then there's a max. there would be a maximum of 24 trainings. Um, so it's up to the board to determine whether you want to set a limit or whether it be um, you know, one per quarter, one per month, or no limit, which the maximum would be 24, just depending on your success rate okay. on that fishing test. So are they required or are they optional? It is required for agency staff. Mm -hmm. Now, it is highly recommended that the board directors also participate in these trainings as it protects the agency's um, IT infrastructure. So a legal question, when, when you require training of an employee, and technically we are employees, you have to pay for it, right? The, the board is treated differently. The board can adopt its own policy on what meetings, even mandatory meetings, are compensable and which are not. Oh, they can. Okay. All right. Um, I just, I'm not, I'm not comfortable with this, you know, unknown maximum per quarter per year. We, should we set a number well, on that? There's a maximum of 10 meetings a month. And I, um, I don't think, you know, the, I think we're really talking about one training a month. Is that right? That would replace what? could have been one of your meetings. That doesn't affect the budget to adopt this at all uh, because they've already calculated the maximum of 10 meetings. But we're ha we have a resolution that just has a, has a blank number in it. And well, that, that's for us to decide. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. All right. So are we deciding that today? Or? We are deciding that today, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Um, I missed that part. So. <laughs> all right. right. We'll leave well, that I'll chime in now since I'm already speaking. Yes, please. <laughs> I'd go with... Uh, three per quarter just that's one a month that should be plenty uh, right so you compensate the remedials if you if you don't manage to pass the first time i've had that experience you know i failed one of these <laughs> so um it will happen you know well you're required to take one test a month i think or they're trying to tell Highly you you're not, right <laughs> yeah well that, that, and, and I, i'd take the recommendation though <laughs> well it'll be up to i mean we're going to come up with someone is going to come up with a motion that we're going to vote on that's going to tell us what that limit or if there is going to be a limit what it will be so we'll we'll go to uh, vice president bowman and then we'll continue the discussion yes i think uh, it is rather self-leveling uh, in the sense that there's 10 allowed per month of days of service and if one fails and they have to take this three times uh oh well it you know you can only max out at 10 per per month anyway, 10, 10 days of service per month. Right. So I think it's self-leveling and it's no impact to the budget, so. So what are you suggesting, that we not put a limit at all, or? Um, one, one per month is what we're, isn't that right? We're, no, we, we're we've, been, we've been given several options. We don't have to have a limit at all. We could impose a limit. Oh, okay. um, one, one per month was suggested, I think, and I think, um, uh, Secretary Treasurer McKenna has suggested three per quarter, which <laughs> kind of is the same thing. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> so it's really up to us to decide I, whether I we feel want. That Go ahead, please. Since it was, I was speaking. Mm -hmm. yeah, if I fail, then I would own the responsibility of taking it, learning until I succeed, and that that would count as one. I'd like to point out, I got 100%. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I was pretty so how, there to celebrate with So you. how would that, if you were, if you were forming a, um, a, a, a motion, what would that look like? It would, to me, it would be that you take the test and that you take it until you pass. May I make one point of clarification? Sure. Please. So... The, the two types of trainings that there are, so the training has a test associated with it. That is one training. And so if you fail the test, you, you take it again. Like that's still one training. But the, the remedial training, it's separate if you fail the phishing test. So that's an email that gets sent out. You don't, you're not paying attention to the warning signs. You click on the link 
and then that means a failed phishing test. And then that reports back to us, uh, our IT department, and then a remedial targeted training is assigned. So there's two separate trainings. Yes, you can retake the test within the, each training as many times as necessary to pass it. And then the secondary training would come with if a phishing test was failed. I would keep it to one per month. Okay. That would be my thoughts. Um, anybody else have a uh, thought about I that? I just want to clarify that uh, staff doesn't have to do, they're, they're, when we get these, st staff gets to decide how many we're going to participate in. They're, they're, whoever's putting these out are deciding the board's going to have to be activated. And that, uh, you know, if, if they decide they're only going to do it every two months, it's only six meetings a year. So it's up to staff to decide that, I think. Our it, current plan is one per month. That is our schedule is one per month mm -hmm. um, and for the foreseeable future. Okay. Anybody else? I mean, it sounds like we're sort of possibly coalescing around one, a limit of one per month, possibly. So that's sort of where you are. That's where you are. I don't know where Director Grush is on that exactly. I, I, I think if somebody's required to take another day that it should be compensated as well. So I, I don't, I, you know, um, I, I, I don't think this is something that people would take advantage of to spread. I don't believe so either. I mean, I can't wait to get finished with it when I get, I'm like, oh God, these people in their, you know. So, so uh, and, and you'll know based on their days of compensation whether to take, you know. Director Bloomer, where do you? I mean, I don't, um, I kind of agree with Director Grosh. I don't think we need a limit. We already have the limit of 10 per month. And if we're scheduled to put out one per month and then. Yeah, I'm, I'm leaning that way as well. I, I, I can go with that. Okay. So um, then we need a motion <laughs> so we can vote. <laughs> I'll make a motion to add, so we just need to add the category. Correct? Add the category and designate how many, if there is a limit that is set and it sounds like one per month. I, I don't think there I is. I think a we limit. just, oh, yeah. yeah. Striking I think the we're, limit. I think we're adding the category, but it's unlimited. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is, yeah. Is, am I right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's my assumption. And I will second that motion. Okay, so, uh, so did we have a first from, we had a first yeah. from Director Bloomer, a second from Vice President McKenna. Yes. All right, um, so may we have a roll call vote, please. Director Grasha. Aye. Director Bloomer. Aye. Secretary Treasurer McKenna. Aye. Vice President Bowman. After this stimulating discussion, <laughs> it's an aye. Okay, And great. President Ortega. Uh, the, yes, Motion thank passes. you. All right, so we move to item <laughs> seven, which is the Secretary Treasurer's report for May 2023. Uh, Secretary Treasurer McKenna, please. Uh, highlights of the report. We received three million approximately in water sales revenue receipts, seventy-two thousand dollars in recycled water sales revenue receipts, ten thousand dollars in power sales revenue from Southern California Edison, and we have seven thousand dollars in miscellaneous receipts for scrap metal. We paid out three point three million in accounts payable. Our year-to-date water sales are 7% under budget, revenues are 5% under budget, and expenses are 8% under budget. So that's a good trend. We have an increase in seven active uh, services to 23,480. Not a lot of change there. Uh, we received $17.4 million in property taxes. They come in big sums of money all at once. Uh, $24,000 in replacement assessments, $135,000 from Coachella Valley Water District for their share of state water project water management costs. We received $686,000 in state water project refunds and $27,000 in power sales from Edison from the Whitewater Hydro. Um, that number's up because we're getting deliveries from the Colorado River and generates electricity when it gets here. We paid out $908,000 to state water project charges, uh, which makes a year to date of $17.8 million. Uh, this year we received, this week, this month, sorry, we received nothing in wastewater revenue receipts. It just went into the following month. But we paid out $8,000 in accounts payable on the wastewater fund. And those are the highlights. 
Thank you. Uh, any questions for Secretary Treasurer McKenna? No? All right. Thank you. Uh, our general manager's report, um, Assistant Manager Johnson, could you take over, please? All right. Uh, thank you, Mr. President and members of the board. So our uh, 2022 water quality report has been posted on our website. Uh, this is a report that we used to mail out to each individual customer. However, we are no longer required to do that as long as we post it on our website. If a customer does want one mailed to them, we w are required to mail a, a copy to them. And we also have some available here in the lobby uh, if someone comes and asks for one, so we have them available. We've done our outreach. We've uh, put uh, our June water bill, had some inserts. They uh, had postcards to service address. Uh, we did social media and our media interview with Joey English. They talked about this report too. And the report should reflect that there was no water quality violations and that we performed over 2,500 tests on the, on the system for the year. Okay, the next uh, item is just an update regarding the BLM right-of-way grant. If you, call, if you recall, back in March, um, we did an update that the BLM issued a record of decision for the whitewater groundwater replenishment facilities and that they, basically, they approved a 30-year right-of-way grant that the grant enables the delivery of recharge of up to 5,511,000 uh, acre feet of water. Uh, well, on June 20th, CV uh, did receive an uh, original copy of the executed right of way grant. Um, some of the highlights in that uh, grant, uh, they did determine that there was a rental fee associated now, uh, that between June 2023 and December 2023, uh, there is a rental fee of $203,000, and that there will be future rental payments associated with, with the facility. They also determined that there is a, uh, a bond in the amount of $7,035,000. And right now, CV is reviewing that requirement, and they will get back to us on how they would like to proceed on handling that bond. And it should be noted that the bond is to be provided on July 30th of 2023. Uh, the next report is just an update on our imported water deliveries. So for um, the whitewater facilities from January through May, we've imported roughly 60,000 acre feet of water. And at Mission Creek, we've imported uh, roughly 1,400 acre feet of, of water. We are expecting water deliveries through the rest of the year, and we are anticipating that uh, we should receive around 330,000 acre feet for the year. And <clears throat> the next item is the city to fund grass remo removal incentive in fiscal year 2023, 20, 2024. I guess on June 29th, the city scheduled a vote for their, their budget. I, I did not see whether they approved the, their budget or not, but uh, this budget included $1.15 million for the joint grass removal incentive program for fiscal year 2023-2024. Uh, so hopefully they did approve that. Um, 
That's a lot of money. The system leaks, uh, pretty s standard here for, for the two or three weeks. Again, uh, Avenida Carreros leads the, the pack with five. Uh, we, again, that job is under contract, and hopefully we'll uh, be able to get that started. Um, there, the contractor did uh, let us know that they are trying to work on expediting some of the material that they said was going to take 42 weeks. They think they might um, be able to find that material in the sooner, um, which will uh, allow us to get that uh, job constructed and, and take care of those leaks. I do want to point out, this is not on the report, but we do have a street, Via Vac Vaquero. Via Vaquero is located just off of Compadre, uh, just north of St. Teresa's. Uh, and over the last week, we've had numerous leaks. On It's around 700 feet of pipe. Uh, they've had to put uh, around 20 clamps on that pipe. And I have authorized uh, our, our crews to do an emergency pipeline replacement on that stretch of pipe. Uh, it it's, uh, was built in the 1950s. It's a bare, unlined steel main, and it, it is failing. So uh, they should be starting that work uh, probably on Monday of next week. And we estimate that would be uh, around $140,000 out of our contingency uh, budgeted money. That's our crew doing the? Our, our crews will be doing the work since it's an emergency re uh, replacement. They're actually out there right now right. repairing some more we what, uh, what leaks. What diameter pipe is that? Uh, what kind of existing pipe? Or Oh, diameter pipe, it'll be an eight inch right, di diameter pipe. Yeah, I th uh, the existing main is a four inch right. main. All right, uh, uh, just had some lists of uh, Mark's meetings and activities, uh, quite extensive. And with that, uh, that concludes the reports. If uh, be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Uh, Director Grasha, any questions for our Assistant General Manager? Well, uh, no, uh, I did have one, but I, but no. no. Okay, thank you. Director Bloomer. Yeah, one question on the BLM rental fee. Is mm -hmm. that 203,000 split with CVWD or is that our portion? Uh, according to the, that is the total rental. So we'll be splitting that cost that, with CV. Have, has CV notified us of that, uh, Esther? The BLM fee? Yeah. That's our portion. The, two, the full yes. portion was close to 600,000. Yes, that is. Oh, correct. is that just ours? I, according to the report, it just says an initial fee of 203,000. Uh, oh, okay. Coachella Valley has submitted a rental fee of $203,000. So that would be the remaining 203,000 would be our portion. Yeah. And it is included in the budget already. Yeah. Was there Sorry. a rental fee before? Never. No, no, there was not. <coughs> okay, anything else? Director Bloomer? No. Oh, okay. Secretary Treasurer McKenna? Um, I have a question on the water quality report, and I get a lot of email about chromium-6, <laughs> but and I'm the first person to admit that the science is all over the place, but we don't seem to have done chromium-6 testing for about three years. We, we test as required. Our, our levels are, are below the MCL, um, and we do not have a Chrome 6 uh, issue that uh, some of uh, other agencies are experiencing. I, on, I believe uh, that, but yeah. I wondered, should we just, we should be testing once in a while anyway? We, we test uh, as required by the, the health department and mandates our testing 
schedules. And I do not know our schedule on when we did the, our last testing. I, I know that we, we follow that uh, schedule as laid out by them. I can get that information for you if you'd like. I, I would. And I'd like to get sure. some sense of you know, where exactly this chromium, hexavalent chromium problem is in, in, in the aquifer. It's here in some places, it's not in others. And if we collect the data, we'd have a better picture of uh, what's coming. You know, yeah. I'll say it. No, I was going to mention it later, but Mission Springs Water District issued their water quality report, and I have a copy, and it shows they don't test for it much either. And I, I think we should be asking all of the private pumpers to give us samples that we can test so we just see the distribution of this problem. I'd just like to have that data. Their, their water quality report indicates their average for the Mission Springs Water District main system is above the projected standard that the state is going to introduce later this year. So I'd really like to get a handle on this before we get told we can't drink the water. Not our water, yeah. their water. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which is the one, water, <laughs> which, which is the water I'm <laughs> drinking right now. <laughs> yeah, I, I can definitely get you uh, information on our testing schedule. Yeah, let's start uh, collecting it. Let's, let's, you know, get ahead of the problem and w so we can identify where it's going to occur and, and what our responsibility will be for it. Could that be something that maybe you could come back to us with um, so that the yes. entire board could be part of that conversation? Yeah, definitely. That That is um, absolutely. We can get that information for you and we sh will have that at our next board meeting. Thanks. If you like. yeah. Thank you. Anything else, sir? Okay, uh, Vice President Bowman. Uh, nothing from me. Uh, and I just have one thing going back to this Via Vaquero um, pipeline emergency replacement. Um, because it's an emergency, uh, and it's taking place, I mean, it's been taking place beginning next week. So what kind of outreach do we do to the neighborhood that's being impacted? We will reach, we'll go do door to door and let the, uh, homeowners know of that we will be moving out there uh, and our anticipated schedule and if they have any questions we'll, we'll provide all of that information the project manager information um, and um, usually uh, the people are, are very uh, appreciative because they have seen us out there uh, in the prior weeks doing a lot of repairs. So they're aware that something is going on. Uh, but, um, uh, and as far as outreach though, uh, our engineering staff works with um, our outreach uh, group for uh, letter writings and so forth on that. And, it, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll hand deliver that information to them. Mm -hmm. And if they're not there, we, we also mail it to their addresses. Is, does this, do you anticipate that there'll be a service disruption to those individuals? There homes? will be no service disruption. Minor, when we tie over sure. the new service to, from the old service to the new service, there's a, a shutdown. Again, we, we coordinate that with the property owners. I'm trying to think, uh, I think there's uh, maybe eight, eight mm -hmm. properties that will, that are affected. They're fairly large parcels right. on that stretch of right. uh, street. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, the Los Compadres uh, area over there. Uh, okay, thank you. Yep. And with that, uh, I think we can move to item number nine, which is director's reports on meetings and events attended on behalf of the agency. Um, uh, Director Grasha, we'll start with you. Well, let me get my calendar open. I hope I can do that. Starting on the June 20th, uh, we had this meeting, of course, the, our general regular meeting. Um, on 
Thursday, the 22nd, I attended the Del Desert Valley Builders Association uh, membership uh, evening appreciation night, I guess they called it. Had a opportunity to spend an hour and a half with uh, Director Meyerhoffman from uh, Mission Springs Water District. Had a lively uh, discussion about uh, many, many issues. Very little about district business, so you can <laughs> relax on that. But uh, had a uh, worthwhile uh, event there. The uh, conservation and public affairs meeting that you and I attended on um, June 26th. Um, I'll have a comment about that at director's comments. And I attended the uh, Coachella Valley Water District meeting on June 27th, and um, routine uh, business, nothing really to report on. And then the uh, Prop 218 hearing on uh, June 28th. And that brings us to today. Thank you. And Director Bloomer? Um, I attended, uh, since our last meeting, the only other extra meeting was um, the Aqua uh, region 10 uh, meeting and uh, tour down in Oceanside. Um, it was uh, very interesting. They're doing um, potable reuse and injecting it into a, it's not an actual aquifer, it's a underground river. Underground river. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so it, it's a huge project and um, we got to go take a look at that and then there were some interesting presentations from a couple different uh, panels um, as well so it was a it was a good event put on by the region 10 folks so and that's it thank you uh, secretary treasurer McKenna um, the only meeting I attended was uh, city of desert hot springs and I, I watched it on YouTube rather than going over there uh, they presented the keys of the city to Danny Lux um, which was, you know, a huge event for Desert Hot Springs. <laughs> but uh, it was the same day as our last board meeting, so I, uh, that's all I have to say. Okay, thank you. Vice President Broman? Yes, I attended, I also attended Region 10's uh, meeting, and I enjoyed uh, the social time with other directors of other areas, as well as our fellow, fellow directors here that went. There was one speaker in the uh, panel discussion, a fellow by the name of Mark Toy, general manager from the Yor Yorba Linda Water District, and he had spent time in the military and also with the Corps of Engineers. And he said, I, I wanna help us get the Corps of Engineers to be more responsive to the, the various water districts in the state. And he was quite lively about it. And mm -hmm. it was a breath of fresh air to hear we can break through some of the log jams that often the core seems to hold up. And then we took the tour of the uh, actual purification process of the pure water ocean side thing. Um, the old term, it's toilet to tap. <laughs> And it's not quite the most uh, taste sounding uh, term, but we did taste the water. We did. And, so far. and so, far. <laughs> <laughs> so far. But uh, it was uh, an enjoyable process. It's state of the art. Uh, and I found it interesting, as Director Bloomer said, they are injecting the water underground, uh, purifying it to where it's better than ever. And by the way, it tasted like reverse osmosis water because it was. Um, and they are injecting it into this river as not only to give themselves more groundwater, but also to keep the ocean water from impeding and polluting their groundwater. So it was, a, it was worth going, and I appreciate it. Thank you. So I attended two meetings in addition to our uh, regular board meetings and committee meetings. Uh, so on the on six twenty seven, um, I attended the um, event that was hosted by uh, our uh, by Congressman Ruiz and the EPA, the regional EPA, 
out at uh, Thermal at the uh, Coachella Valley Unified School District's headquarters. Uh, that was not a compensable event, but uh, was about, in, it's basically about environmental justice and these technical assistance centers that are being set up um, throughout the country uh, by EPA to help um, uh, communities that don't have the resources to apply for grants, uh, particularly focus on grants um, because of their size or their, um, or their, uh, how do you want to say, their, uh, not having the people on staff to help apply for these grants. Um, and uh, saw some of our fellow water agency um, folks there as well from Mission Springs and also Coachella Valley Water District. Um, and then also on uh, Thursday the 29th, attended the uh, Region 10 meeting that has been, uh, that we've spoken about already uh, or has been spoken about already. I would say that um, Mr. Toy was um, aggressive. <laughs> he wasn't just enthusiastic, he was actually aggressive about how he would um, like to engage in the future uh, water agencies in California to engage with the Corps. Um, some things that I was a little surprised to hear actually, but uh, also as you said, it was refreshing. Uh, my only disappointment about that event is that we didn't actually get to go inside the facility because of apparently there is a, um, uh, they have not received some, the, the use permit yet to allow a large number of people through the facility and we were quite a large group. I think we were about 60, 70 people possibly. Um, but I uh, was happy to see um, so many people interested in this project. Uh, and I think we'll be seeing more of these kinds of projects uh, down the road. I know that uh, our uh, friends at Valley Sanitary District have been talking about something like this. And, and I was able to attend another uh, um, a Region 9 event earlier uh, this year out in, um, in Highland, uh, which is also a similar project. Not called Pure Water, but uh, same concept. So with that, um, I will, uh, let's see, we are at director's comments. And uh, I think Director Grasha said he ha might have a comment. Uh, just uh, noticing uh, on, on the uh, uh, warrant register or the checks that are going out, uh, substantial amounts of uh, outgoing money for uh, our conservation efforts and uh, turf removal. A couple of them were pretty big. Um, it, it, it seems like we might uh, consider at some point in the future a, a board field trip, special meeting, if you will, or maybe even combining it with our, I don't know how that would work, I guess it won't, um, to go out and take a look at what we're, some of these uh, projects that we're doing as a board and try to get a real uh, sense of uh, what's happening. Um, I know there was uh, a, what I thought to be a rather large one in my division up at Mission, Mission Lakes uh, Country Club, but then I saw two others on there that were twice as big as that. The, the checks went out for $300,000 a piece. I'd like to see what a $300,000 turf removal project looks like and it not be a mystery, because right now it's a mystery what, what that money accomplished for us. And um, that's your division paying for that. It's your division, my division. You know, uh, I'd like to know. I'd like to see it, and uh, over the next year, take a good hard look at what we're doing on that, and um, so that we can either uh, defend the program or, or uh, maybe make adjustments. Or um, I guess we have a. This is on a, a going on to a different subject. I guess we have a upcoming. Uh, potentially an upcoming meeting, I guess, but I say potentially because I'm not sure it's been confirmed, but uh, with um, our um, friends at Mission Springs Water District coming up on July 25th, I think. I'm looking forward to that. I hope, uh, I hope we have great participation from both sides. I know when I served on that board, everything that happened over here seemed to be kind of a mystery. And uh, it, was a, it, it wasn't really a mystery, but it was a mystery was created by input coming from uh, s certain staff over at Mission Springs, creating a kind of a divisive uh, situation, created a, an energy of distrust, 
which, you know, I, I never understood because, you know, when you live here 40 years and, um, you know, you always have questions about what your government is up to, but when you start hearing accusations that are, just don't seem to fit the, um, my point is, I, it, it, this is a great opportunity, something that um, um, I've been working hard for for quite a long time to kind of uh, um, heal the wounds, if you will. Wounds that I never felt existed except in, in the minds of a few people, and they've been... I, so we have a new day. I think we do have a... It's scheduled, do we not? We have it confirmed, and okay. I believe it is on the morning of the 25th. Yes, and I just received confirmation from um, Mission Springs that they have it on their calendar. Great. Thank you. Well, we uh, earlier, uh, you know, when we were talking about the um, um, dropping the 20% tax, there was an element of that. You know, we, we don't differentiate on our water bills what certain things are used for. They get the bill, it's 40 bucks or whatever it is, and we don't say what portion goes for what. But some of that is for, um, well, it's, it goes to many different things. Uh, there, there was a question raised at Mission Springs by a board member about uh, the recharge appearing on their bill, what what uh, we have to pay, our, our rate payers uh, pay it in, in Palm Springs the same amount, the same percentage, but we don't break it down piece by piece. Um, years ago, 2018, I think, there was um, a movement at Mission Springs to try to... And that's when that started appearing on their water bill. And it was a, it appeared to me to be an attempt to kind of defame Desert Water Agency. Um, the people that instituted that are gone now. And uh, I, I just thought uh, maybe we could uh, at some point try to explain that in a way that uh, doesn't sound divisive. I know even what I'm saying now may sound divisive to, to some people, but... Um, Mission Springs water ratepayers get a bill, and it says a, it has on the bill the Desert Water Agency, and it has an amount. I think you mentioned, and so it creates a. Uh, <coughs> one of their directors asked about it, and I'd like to figure out a way to answer that so that. Um, would that be something that would be appropriate for that meeting? I mean, I know we're there primarily to do a field trip to the. Um, to the uh, settling ponds, but if it were on an agenda, it could be discussed, could it not? Or would that would it be another forum be better? If it were on the agenda, it could be discussed. I suspect that a different forum might be better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I, it could I be just, a future I, meeting. I'm, I'm trying to figure out a way to uh, 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 approach the subject because it it bothered me a little bit, and then I re now I learn that every water bill in the state of California includes that, only it's part of the bill. It's not itemized out, trying to make another agency look like they're doing something that nobody else is doing. And in fact, their former now former general manager went so far as to say that we're the only agency in the state of California that does that, and it's forcing something upon them. And if you go back and listen to that, uh, can I chime in on that? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I, I think uh, Director Hurd um, questioned why they were paying for a recharge of the aquifer in years we didn't recharge the aquifer. And it, it's a fair question, but the general manager responded as well. I don't know why they do that. There's 27 agencies in, in, in the state, and only two of them do that. But uh, I think after we have this visit to the Mission Creek replenishment facility, they'll understand that they're paying for taking water out of the aquifer and uh, other water districts that, that buy water from the state water project, they get it delivered in a pipe <laughs> and it can be metered and you can pay for what you get. But Mission Springs, you can't meter it and you can't charge them on the basis of you know what they get because uh, it's a, just a different system. And I think the, the misunderstanding that, that Director Hurd had up there was, uh, you know, why do we pay it in years that we don't get replenishment? Um, 
So we'll, we'll be able to address that issue when, when we show them how it all works. So I, I think what I'm trying to say is that we're at a, a point now where when directors at Mission Springs have questions of us, I'm hoping that as we move along, they'll be able to ask and get input from, from us and create a dialogue that allows those questions to be able to be answered without the uh, awkwardness of what's just happened here over the last minute and a half or three minutes. So that's that. I'm looking forward to that. And I think we talked about it at our conservation meeting, um, the uh, potential of uh, even establishing a something that you had recommended, uh, Director Bauman, during um, the buildup to the elections by division that we establish some kind of a committee structure that would allow input from their board and and um, kind of a, a a new relationship that's not really establishing a new uh, a new agency of any kind, but just a way to be open about questions. I'm sure that I can see the fidgeting over there of our, our attorney might have. Him. Okay, good. So, <laughs> so this is just a uh, to, to to start framing a uh, discussion for potential for um, uh, improvement in our communications uh, between the two agencies. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, uh, Director Bloomer. No comments or requests. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Secretary Treasurer McKenna, anything additional? Um, yeah, I'd like to commend something I've been reading lately from New York Times Magazine, June 22nd edition, Christopher Cox. From, sorry. I'm talking about the New York Times Magazine edition of uh, June 22nd. Um, a reporter called Christopher Cox wrote a great story on the California water infrastructure. And it, it's not just the fact that uh, uh, one of the comments that, that uh, was mentioned in there was that we are we have water infrastructure we all know it's ancient um, but it also was designed for a climate we don't live in anymore and uh, I just want particularly our, our colleagues here to look at that because there's an awful lot of risk built into the infrastructure risk of failure and it hasn't really been assessed in the light of the new climate that we live in and I think it's fair to say you know the climate is different from what I grew up with. Um, and it, it calls us to action for, you know, getting diversity of supply and being able to, you know, to find other ways to supply our customers. And I think, going back to what you mentioned about the Oceanside facility, the idea that we can bring water from 600 miles away, use it once and throw it away, is pretty old thinking. We can't do that anymore. You know, we're going to have to look at, <coughs> excuse me, you know, recycling the water and drinking it. You know, let's face it, you know, it has a yuck factor, but people who live in the Mississippi River have been doing it for years. <laughs> so we, sh we just have to get our customers and colleagues used to that idea. You know, using it and throwing it away is not working anymore. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Vice President Bowman. Uh, nothing. Thank you. Okay. Well, I have a couple follow-up comments. Um, with regard to our neighboring water district, uh, Mission Springs, uh, that has been uh, something that with this new board and in my role as president of the board that I have been very um, anxious, no, anxious is probably not the right word, uh, supportive of looking for a better relationship uh, with that uh, sister agency um, than what has been in the past. So these, these steps forward in terms of this field trip and, you know, what might result out of that in a future future meetings, I think, are all very good things. Um, with regard to uh, your comments, Secretary Treasurer McKenna, about diversify, diversifying supply, I think what's great about these re these regional Aqua regional meetings is you get to see projects like that. You get to see this um, uh, pure water uh, project, for example, um, or w as I said, um, our um, friends at Valley Sanitary who I sat with uh, at a CSDA event last year. Uh, this is a project that, this type of project, they're very uh, interested in doing, and I expect that they may even reach out to us at some point to see if that might be a part for us to play in terms of participation. But whether we're doing it directly or we're involving ourselves in other projects uh, to uh, support the um, something like, for example, Valley Sanitary, uh, where that, which is really intended to go back into the aquifer, which is one that we all uh, enjoy and participate in. Uh, but that's why I think these regional uh, events are so are so good. 
uh, for uh, directors, uh, directors here, directors in other agencies to participate in. So I encourage in the future when you see something like that on a Aqua regional program calendar to, to take advantage of that um, because I think there's a lot to learn uh, that we can learn uh, as back to your point about diversification. So with that, um, I'll, um, I'll uh, close the meeting, open session today, and, and we could meet in closed session at 9.20. Thank you. So item 12 on our agenda is, um, is what we're doing right now, reconvening from closed session into open, section, open session, and I am going to announce that there was no reportable action taken. So with that, we can adjourn the meeting. Thank you very much to the members of the public and staff. <laughs>